Hello, and welcome to Wall Street Trainings, module on corporate valuation methodologies. My name is Hamilton Lin, president and founder of Wall Street Training, and I have a background in investment banking and mergers and acquisitions, having worked at Goldman Sachs' Investment Banking Research, Bank of America Securities' Mergers and Acquisitions Group, and several other boutique investment banks, all focused on mergers and acquisitions. Please note that these materials are copyrighted and may not be disseminated or reproduced without express written approval what from... What we are trying to say is that the enterprise value divided by revenue and EBITDA is the correct ratio. In other words, enterprise value and EBITDA, these are the correct ratios to use. Likewise, for equity value, or conversely, for equity value, the only correct is for net income. That is this number down here. And now, the question I will pose to you is, why is it the enterprise value is the correct numerator when you're trying to figure out revenue multiples as well as EBITDA multiples. And why is equity value the correct number to use for net income? Think about that and then you can forward on to our explanation of why the numerator is going to be different for each one of these multiples. In addressing this question here, one must ask yourself, who has a claim on revenue and EBITDA? There are three stakeholders who have a claim on revenue and EBITDA. The equity holders, the debt holders, as well as the government on taxes. Yes, the vendors and suppliers and employees also have a claim, but we are assuming that that is part of the normal course of business. Because again, we are talking about capital structure and the actual debts that are owed. So from that perspective, equity, debt, and government have a claim on revenue and EBITDA. Well, how is the enterprise value constructed? Enterprise value is constructed by equity plus the debt as well. And of course, the government is just a liability you have to pay. Therefore, these cash flows and these valuations are now aligned. Enterprise value, revenue, and EBITDA. Now taking a look at, at the equity value over net income. Who has a claim on net income? Only the equity holders. Why do only the equity holders have a claim on net income? Because the debt holders have already been paid as well as the government. Why? because the debt holders have already been paid their interest and the government has already been paid their taxes. That's the net income number, the net net number. So therefore, what is the only constituency base that has a claim on its net income? Equity again. Therefore, equity value is the correct numerator for net income. Said another way, revenue belongs to the entire firm or all capital holders at the bottom of the slide, as does EBITDA because it is before interest payments, earnings before interest and taxes. And therefore, the correct term to use for these guys would be enterprise value. And also, for net income, net income only belongs to the equity holder since it's after interest payments, and that is why you must properly align the multiples. Once again, let's say that again. Revenue belongs to the entire firm, all stakeholders, all capital holders, as does EBITDA. And therefore, who has a claim on this firm? The enterprise value. Everybody who has a component of capital that contributed to enterprise. However, for net income, because it's after the taxes have been paid to the government and after interest expense, after the debt holders have been satisfied, this now means who is the residual claim on this? That, of course, is the equity holders as well, and that is why you must properly match the multiples. And if you were to not properly match the multiples, looking at our firm B, right-hand side, you will see that you have incorrect multiples that are grossly inaccurate. So you must make sure you fully understand this term enterprise value.